I'm Kimberly Jolly with Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube and today we're going to show you how to make a super cute bowl filler pillow. And what we'll be using today is a cross stitch piece from Stitch Card Set H by Lori Holt. We're going to combine that with Lori Holt's Economy 6 inch paper and we're going to make a cute bowl filler. Here are the supplies you need to make your Lori Holt bowl filler pillow. So for this, you definitely need the six inch economy paper by It's so Emma and Lori Holt. And you definitely need a stitched stitch card. Any of Lori Holt's stitch cards will fit. Um, today we're doing Penny Pig and he's gonna go right in the center. You need two scraps of fabric for the front and back of your pillow. And um, just some general sewing supplies. We're gonna have a, a ruler that's gonna cut this down. We're going to use a rotary cutter. We're going to use a glue stick that's going to work with the paper. This will be a general marking tool. We've got some needles and we've got polyfill to fill the pillow. Now, if you wanted to, you could also use walnut shells. On the outside of the pillow, we're going to accent it with the large Riley Coral Vintage Trim. We're gonna use this fray check for the rickrack so it doesn't fray at the end, and we're also gonna use this fabric fusion pin to get the rickrack um, on our pillow. So let's get started. For the economy block that goes on the front of the pillow, I'm gonna show you how to center the penny pig in the very center, and then after you do that, I would like to reference these two videos to show you how to complete the entire block. First is our video and second is Lori's video. And the great thing about these videos is we both piece the economy block a little bit differently, but we end up with the same exact result. Again, we're using the six inch block. And on this, you want to leave the border off and any of her stitch cards will work with this method. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take one of my papers off So I've taken my paper out, and if you fold on this crease, we just want to center in this very center square. And so I'm going to use my add a quarter to mark my creases, and that will help me when I place this down in a second. This measures exactly three inches. So we want to draw a box on our cross stitch fabric with the friction pin, a three inch square, and then we will cut larger than that. But we want to use a friction pin because this will disappear with heat later. We want to draw a box around Penny Pig that's three inches. And so if I measure from the tail to his snout, it's one and seven eighths. So that means I've got one and an eighth left over here. So I need to take the one and an eighth divided by two, and that is five eighths. So I need to measure 5 eighths from the edge of the tail. And you don't have to be as exact as this. This is just um, a general start and then we can adjust our lines if we need to. And then if you measure from the foot to the top, it's one and three quarters. So if you measure away from the three inches, that gives you one and a quarter left that you need to divide that. So one and a quarter divided by two is five eighths. So I think the previous one was not exactly five eighths. It was a little bit less between five eighths and half an inch. So we're gonna just measure here. And like I said, you don't have to be as exact as I'm being. Now we're gonna just measure to see if we're about the right spot. So that's the distance, and that's the distance. So that's a perfect evenness here. Now, it looks like I'm a little bit too far over here. There's too much space over here compared to here. So I'm gonna change it a little bit. And I'm gonna do a little bit over here. It'll look a little bit better over here. So that looks more even. So I'm gonna use these lines. And I'm gonna cut about half an inch away and it will get trimmed down when we're doing the block. Just the excess will get trimmed down. And 
And then we're gonna take our paper, which we have um, creased so we know where our creases are. I like to use the sew line glue pen and I'm just gonna glue a little bit down. And I'm gonna place the lines that we just did on here. Just like that. So now that I have my penny pig in here and it's pretty secure with my glue, we're gonna build the block following one of the videos I referenced, either our video or Lori's video. We're gonna place the brown fabric here, which is from her Prim Fabric Collection by Riley Blake. We're gonna use this fabric for these points. We're gonna use the pink gingham for the outer points. And then we're gonna use this for the brown for our backing. So finish your block and then come back and we'll finish our bowl filler pillow. So I've added the fabrics to the outside to make the six inch economy block with the It's So Emma Foundation Paper by Lori Holt. And I trimmed it down following the videos I referenced. I also cut a six and a half inch square for the backing of my pillow. I decided in the middle of this project that I wanted to add some interfacing behind the block so that our stuffing would not come through the front of the cross stitch material. So I got some of Lori Holt's sew-in interfacing and it is not fusible. So what we're gonna do is just place it on the back. Now I'm gonna stitch this in place and I'm just gonna stitch about a quarter inch around with white RFL thread and we'll be ready to assemble our pillow. So I just did a simple stitch to get this down and the interfacing is just so my stuffing won't go through to the front. And now I'm going to take my backing fabric, which is the same size as the front of my pillow. I'm gonna put that right on the edge and I am going to stitch all the way around all four sides and I'm going to leave a three inch gap right here for us to unfold. So we're gonna start stitching and go all the way around and just leave a three inch hole. I sewed around the outside and again, I left a three inch gap. And when I started and stopped, I did use a back stitch because we're gonna put some pressure on those seams slightly. So we want to turn this right side out, but first I'm gonna clip the corners slightly. You don't want to clip to the stitches just a little bit past the stitches and that's going to help your corners come out a little bit nicer. And then we're just going to turn this right side out. Our little pig is so cute. And I'm going to just use my finger to pop the corners out. And we're gonna put rickrack around the edge so it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. So just get this nice and kind of even. And then we're gonna use our polyfill. The best way to do a bowl filler pillow is to put in a small amount at a time. So I'm just gonna break these up. And you just put a small amount in one corner and you just start building it. Now this is gonna probably take me 10 to 20 minutes. But you just, the smaller the amount you put in, the better it's going to look in the end. And I'm just kind of putting it all in one spot. I'll probably build the bottom and then go piece by piece. And by doing it little chunks at a time, you won't have any gaps in there. And just take your time doing this part.
Okay, so my pillow is really nice and firm. I stuff it more than you think it needs to be stuffed because it will soften up, so I've got it super filled. I used about half of my bag, so I did put a lot in there. And now I'm gonna hand close this and show you how to do that. Now I'm gonna take a little piece of scrap batting and put it right here, and the reason I'm gonna do that is when I'm sewing this closed by hand, I don't want my stuffing to start coming out. So I'm just gonna take some black gold needles. I like these needles because they're super sharp. So now I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna do this with a kind of a little whip stitch. So I'm gonna start on the right and I'm gonna put my needle under here and kind of come up where my sewing machine stitches are. and I'm going to just create this seam. And I'm just gonna go from one side to the other side, really, really close to the edge and your stitches will hide. So you just go in the very tippy top, right where the fold is. And my stitches are probably an eighth of an inch away from each other. This is gonna get hidden also by the rick rack, so you could do big stitches and nobody would know. So when I'm stitching, I'm gonna stitch all the way past my previous machine stitches, just so that it is nice and secure. And this will be hidden because of the rick rack. And to tie it off, what I will do I'm going to just put my needle through one time, have a loop at the top, put my needle through the loop twice, and that is going to make a knot, and then I'm gonna cut right at the knot. It will all kind of even out, and um, it will flatten over time. You can leave the pillow just like this, or you can add some rick rack. And so when I'm doing rick rack or my opening, I always kind of hide that at the bottom. So what I will do is this is Vintage Trim by Lori Holt, and the color is Riley Coral. And I'm just gonna kind of make sure I have enough to go around. So I have tested Aileen's Fabric Fusion Glue, and we're gonna use that for the rick rack. And at the end, we might add fray check to the end of the rick rack. So the first thing I'll do is get a really nice cut here. It's easier if you have something to hold your pillow in place as you're doing this. So I've got just a little tin bucket that actually fits the pillow really nice. So I'm gonna put that in there. And again, I'm starting at the very bottom. And so this is Fabric Fusion Glue and I'll just start in that center and I will put this glue down. It's gonna dry clear, so if you get too much, it'll be okay. So I'll put that on there. And then rotate. And whatever glue you use, you just wanna make sure, maybe test it out the night before. You're gonna do this to make sure the rickrack stays nice and in place. Now when I get over here, I don't wanna stuff this in my 
um, container because I don't want the rickrack to start moving, but I'm going to leave it there because that still gives me room for another, um, it still lets me have room for my hands to be free, both hands to be free. And I'm just putting the vintage trim rickrack, you know, just putting it right on that crease. And you could also just do each side one at a time and let it dry before you do the next side. And on something like this, I do think it's better to have too much glue than not enough because you don't want it to fall off. So now you can see we're covering up those pretty stitches that I just did, so it doesn't even really matter how pretty they are. Okay, this one's coming off, so I'm going to put it back down. And I'm gonna let this rickrack right here at the very end kind of overlap a little bit and then cut. And then right there, you can put a little fray check. And then it won't fray. So now our fabric fusion glue is nice and dry and it's not gonna come off, it's very strong. We did find that when we were doing this, letting one side dry at a time will give you more effective results. The idea for this bowl filler pillow came from Lori Holt. We hope you love it and we're gonna insert some beauty shots of how Lori does different versions of bowl filler pillows. So you can see you can do some large like this one with the economy block. You can do some with no fabric around it and do like a variety and you can also change up this fabric. And of course you can do these with any of the Lori Holt stitch cards. Subscribe to our channel and make sure to check out Lori Holt's YouTube channel also. And we'll see you next time.